people of YouTube. Uh, thanks for coming back and checking out my Man Cave channel to see progress on the Intex Seahawk 4. As you can see from the photos, I've elected to redo the center steering console. I needed to find room for the fish finder and I decided to go with a sportier looking design. I think it turned out well. Now first, just a word about the boat in general. This is I am not a naval architect. This is not a design I'm endorsing. I, it's just something I've built for myself. If you want to build something similar, it, you are in, it's entirely up to you, but it's, it's not something I'm building with, with ideas of publishing the design or anything. It's just my own toy. Okay, let's get going here. So this is a view of the side panel that gets attached to either side of the floor. You'll need a right and a left side. Uh, if you get this right, the rest of the boat goes together very, very easily. Uh, here's a view showing me gluing in my supports for the side panel to support the other pieces of the plywood and to, to be able to attach the side panels to the floor. Uh, I like to use this Gorilla Glue stuff. It's a polyurethane adhesive, although it's not the only glue that would work. Uh, keep in mind, this, this boat, the floor part of it does not get submerged. It's, you know, it, it will get wet, of course. Boats do. Uh, but... It's not something that's, that's submerged all the time. I've, I've had very, very good results with PL glues, uh, polyurethane glues, uh, like construction adhesives. Epoxy would work just great. All the joints are backed up with screws as well, wood screws. When you attach the sides to the bottom, you want to make sure the sides are straight. They don't have to be straight. I know on the Seahawk 3, I, I included some curve in there. I just thought it looked better. It made it a little smaller too, which is good. Uh, but on this one, the wood was fairly uh, sturdy and by the time you got all the the braces in there there was no way those sides were going to bend and make sure you leave I'm going to say an inch and a half from the outboard sides of the bottom to make sure that you've got enough of a, a ledge there for the, the boat to fit, the bottom to fit snugly inside the vinyl hull. Past that, it's just a matter of filling in the pieces, the plywood pieces and the, the framing pieces uh, as shown in the photos with screws and glue. Uh, I, mean, I mean, you can see I made a little bit of a mistake there when I attached my sides. I should have included some offsets uh, from the bottom to the, the, the side frames. I, I should say the part where the, the overhanging transom piece. <clears throat> if I'd done a better job of that, it would I would have required less epoxy and filler later on. But, it, you know, at the end of the day, it's fine. You know, it's a little more work. But it, it, what you want is a nice, rounded, smooth corner pretty much everywhere. Okay, two additional details to keep in mind is you want to make sure you have access to the valves in the boat. And then the two valves that you, you need to bear in mind would be the, the bottom floor chamber valve and the valve for the middle chamber. Both of those are, with this design, are covered up and you really, you don't want to have to disassemble the entire boat to add air to those chambers. I mean, I would even say if I'm out in the, in the water with the boat at the time, it wouldn't, wouldn't bother me one bit to actually just, you know, take the pump with me and, and add air while I'm, while I'm doing my fishing or whatever it is I'm doing. Um, the valves on the boat all have check valves, so you're not going to lose your air by doing that. And even so, you know, you've got, it's a three chamber boat, probably if, as long as two chambers are still good, you're, you're not going to be in any danger of sinking. Uh, the other issue I had with this, and it's just mostly because I didn't leave enough clearance for that overhanging transom, is there are a couple of, uh, bonded on motor mount provisions, uh, on the Intex Seahawk 4 that need to be cut away for clearance. It's either that or you, you raise your transom just a little bit to, to include that clearance in there. I, honestly, I, I, have, I did initially try with the Seahawk 3 using that engine mount or motor mount uh, provision on there and it was awful. It really was just, I had no faith in it whatsoever. Maybe for a really, really small trolling motor it would be adequate, but it was junk. So I just took it off with a Sawzall on, on uh, the Seahawk 4. This next slide is a diagram showing the side profile of the seating steering console. You need a right and a left side. I used, I think, three pieces of 2x8 that I had planed down to one inch thick to provide some uh, vertical frames. 
and the rest of it's just framed up with uh, spruce uh, lumber. Once again, it's about, about an inch by inch and a half, just something decent enough to get a screw in and then capped off with plywood everywhere else. Okay, the next bit of footage here is just me showing you the last few looks at the boat uh, and some of the details before I, you know, finish it off, epoxy in those uh, poorly done edges there and paint it up, you know, at which point all the details are hidden. So yeah, you can see the, I, I left room for the gas tank there. Uh, a few views showing the motor uh, steering arrangement there. I'll talk about that a, a little bit later as well. Uh, tie wraps to hold the Teleflex steering cable in place. There's the access hole for the Teleflex, Teleflex steering cable. Fish finder mounted in place. There's another little hole drilled uh, on the same piece that the fish finder is mounted to to let the cable pass through. few more shots of the boat. You can see those uh, vertical pieces, those vertical frames that I talked about earlier are, are clearly visible there. Those are also what you screw into to attach the, the bottom piece to the steering console. Yeah, it's looking good. Turned out quite well, I think. Just a few more shots. The uh, 30 pound weight there is just there to counterbalance the weight of the engine on the back of the boat. It's uh, the two stroke water cooled engine is quite heavy as it turns out. Considerably heavier than the air cooled one I was using on the Seahawk 3. So here's the insert all painted up sitting outside. A few just kind of wanted to do a quick uh, view of it before it got installed into the boat itself. Looking good oil-based paint I used. Wasn't particularly happy with it. It didn't cover all that well. I don't know if it was just the pigment, but anyway, you can, you can see the grain. You can see the pencil marks coming through the paint there. And here's the boat all assembled. Looking good, looking ready for the water. Last little bit of video footage here showing the steering arrangement here. Here is a clevis pin holding the my steering rod in place. That, that rod is just a piece of conveniently sized aluminum tubing that slipped over the, the Teleflex uh, cable end with a bolt to hold it in place. I've actually left myself uh, maybe another 10 inches. I can move the whole steering console forward another 10 inches or so if, if, if the boat proves to be a little too unbalanced this way. That's not, not something I can determine with it just sitting in the driveway like this. Uh, here's some access uh, for, you know, probably the 12 volt battery would go in there. Whatever boating gear you've got, fishing gear can go in there as well. The front seat pivots up as well. And that is the boat. Okay, there will be a part three to this uh, boat build series. Part three will show the installation and setup of the fish finder, me installing the 12 volt battery, uh, locating the rod holders. I'm not quite sure where they're going to go or even if they're in fact gonna get used. Um, there will be a C test. Any other little details that I, I don't think I maybe covered that quite clearly will be covered in part three. So please, like and subscribe to the video and I will see you on part three of the build series. Thank you.